Caloric intake, 2,000. Calories burned, 352. Stress levels, moderate. Skin temperature, normal. BMI, 22. Heart rate, 74 beats per minute. No, this isn't some kind of robot or scientists running tests on some weird mutant alien. It's you. This is all information that devices like fitness trackers and wearables can tell you about yourself. But is all this really necessary? Can't you tell that you're tired without checking your watch to see how many hours of sleep you got? Can't you know that you're maintaining a healthy caloric maintenance by a stable weight and healthy diet and lifestyle? Is there a need for fitness trackers and the like? And are they better than good old-fashioned intuition and common sense? Today, I will be answering all these questions, discussing the undeniable pros of the quantified self movement, and unveiling its dark side. The quantified self is just what it sounds like. It's a term and movement referring to the datification of oneself. Basically, the idea of measuring biometric functions of oneself and one's life and turning it into meaningful numbers and statistics for the purposes of improving health and well-being. This is in contrast to more traditional approaches to health that rely solely on common sense and natural intuition to make healthy decisions. But this kind of lifestyle may be a thing of the past. Since the early 2010s, the quantified self way of living has absolutely exploded. Just several years ago, seeing a smartwatch was rare, but nowadays it's uncommon to go anywhere without seeing at least like 20. Just before the pandemic, it was reported that one in five Americans owned a smartwatch or fitness tracker. But because of how many people adopted fitness trackers over the course of the pandemic, and just by my own observations, I would estimate that in 2022, it's now one in four Americans. That's a lot. Currently, Fitbit, Apple, Google, virtually every tech company sells fitness trackers, most of which are highly successful. People love the quantified self lifestyle, and for good reasons. There are lots of pros that come along with the quantified self. For one, the data, trends, and analytics gathered by these fitness trackers can be very useful. It can help you find patterns in yourself that you would have never known otherwise, like how your mood correlates with what you ate for breakfast, or how the amount of REM you got affects your energy levels. For athletes who need to know their exact measurements and stats, need a GPS, stopwatch, specific apps, and have to track their exact caloric intake and heart rate, the quantified self lifestyle is a no-brainer. And for people with health conditions that need to monitor their glucose levels, blood pressure, heart rate, etc., the quantified self method can be life-changing and perhaps essential. Another huge pro of the quantified self lifestyle are the life-saving features that many wearables come with. There are countless stories of ECGs saving people's lives, fall detection calling the police when the user is unconscious, and voice assistants getting people out of situations where they can't reach their phone. Although it is rare that your watch will save your life, it's not impossible. And for the off chance that something does go wrong, the knowledge that you have a potentially life-saving device by your side is a great assurance. Another, more everyday pro of the quantified self lifestyle is the convenience that comes along with it via the quality of life features that smartwatches bring, like reminders, notifications, and apps. Some devices even have vibration alarms that detect when you're in light sleep so that you don't have to wake up feeling groggy. Another big pro that smartwatches and wearables have to offer is the gamification of fitness, along with providing users competition and community, which can give people a stronger sense of motivation. And lastly, perhaps the most common reason for people going down the quantified self route is that it can be a lot of fun for data junkies and analytics nerds, or even just for normal people who think it's cool. And just because the information gathered by these devices isn't necessarily essential to you, it can still make life and fitness more enjoyable. And I say, as long as it's improving your life, then go for it. However, there are some less than pleasant aspects of the quantified self movement and lifestyle that need to be addressed. For one, depending on your personality, it's easy to get swept away into the numbers and become a little too obsessed with your data, to the point where it starts to become unhealthy, like obsessing over the exact number of calories in a meal or how much sleep you got. Perhaps waking up and seeing that your sleep score is less than ideal would make you feel grumpy and less energized, even though you would have been completely fine if you didn't see it. Similarly, another con of the quantified self movement is that it has the possibility to get you to listen more to the numbers instead of to what your body is telling you. Despite all of the precise information fitness trackers display, you still know yourself the best. And if the numbers aren't adding up with how you're feeling, trust yourself, not the device. Unfortunately, it's sometimes easier said than done if you're really invested in the lifestyle. Another very important downside to the quantified self route is privacy. The data these devices collect about you don't just go to you. They most certainly also go to the supplier of the wearable. Whether they're able to see that data is debatable, and probably depends on the company and situation. But to be safe, I would expect the worst, and just assume that they have access to it. I would also not rule out the possibility of your data ending up in the hands of third parties, who can capitalize on your information for commercial reasons, like more precise ad targeting and who knows what else. I would also not be surprised if your biometric data also finds its way into the hands of your own and or foreign governments for the purposes of increasing surveillance and population tracking. In fact, I would almost expect it. 
The last thing to be aware of before plunging into the quantified self lifestyle is that it might be a stepping stone towards the idea of transhumanism, or the merging of humans with technology. This is a goal that many companies and governments seem to share, and the quantified self movement may be a branch of that. Fitness tracking is changing people's mindsets. In a way, it's warming people up to the idea of viewing themselves more as machines, as a bunch of numbers. See, we started out with just computers, but over the years, new tech has been invented, each one more personal than the next, more intertwined with human life, and more privacy invasive. We started out with just computers, which have little ways to track you compared to other devices. Then came phones, which have GPS, microphones, and cameras, and are with you at all times. Next, wearables, which do all the tracking of phones, plus biometric tracking. Everything from your heart rate to your fitness level to your sleep schedule and more. Then, VR. It can scan your room and surroundings, and in the future, it may be able to scan your irises. VR is even more intertwined with a human psyche than phones or wearables, because instead of interacting with the screen, you're interacting in the screen. But I believe that the last stage consists of chips, implants, and eventually, maybe cyborgs. I know it sounds kind of far-fetched and futuristic, and maybe it is, but you can't help but notice the trend that technology becomes more and more involved and more and more invasive every year. Now, I'm not even saying that the merging of humans with technology is inherently bad. If personal choice and control over one's own data and enhancements is involved, it may be an amazing thing and the way of the future. But currently, there are a lot of ethical questions surrounding the transhumanist movement, not to mention the fact that many of the people and organizations pushing for it are sort of creepy and dystopian. I'm not saying you shouldn't keep an open mind about future possibilities, but just something to be aware of before diving headfirst into the quantified self movement. So, that being said, who should use the quantified self method? And is it worth it? Well, I think that this way of managing health is a good fit for athletes, people who need some extra motivation, people with certain health conditions, and data junkies, or just people in general who find pleasure and motivation from looking at their stats. The quantified self route has amazing upsides, like knowing more about yourself than ever before, having potentially life-saving tech by your side, and to be honest, it can just be a really fun way of managing your health. But do know that these devices are not private. Be wary about where your data is going, and know that it is not just going to you. And lastly, be aware of the possible motivations of the quantified self movement and where it may be leading us. Overall, if you find that tracking your health in this manner and using these devices improves your health and quality of life and you're not worried about the downsides, then that's awesome. The quantified self movement is a really interesting product of the 21st century, and I'm curious to see where it takes us.